If you've ever looked at all those digital numbers like 24-bit, 44.1 kilohertz, or 328 kilobits per second, and wondered what they mean and how they affect the sound of your music, you are certainly not alone. In this video, I'll try to explain these in simple terms so you can be better informed when looking at audio gear, streaming services, and downloadable music files. Now, this is gonna be an overview for those of you trying to understand digital music better. I'm not gonna be diving into the different types of music files like Wave, FLAC, ALAC, etc., or more niche formats like DSD, which is really good, but just a little bit hard to find. So, to fully understand what all these numbers actually mean, we need to take a step back and look at how music used to be recorded before digital came into existence. In the past, musicians were recorded on analog tape with every ounce of music and tiny nuances of expressions fully captured on that analog tape. Now that particular tape became the master tape from which copies were made to produce vinyl records and reel-to-reel -reel tapes. Every part of the process was analog. However, like digital, analog does have some pitfalls, although they're totally different from the digital ones. For example, vinyl records are not completely silent and, if not cared for properly, develop ticks and pops. The analog tapes can also degrade over time with some of the subtleties of the music getting lost. And every time you make an analog copy, you can lose some information in the process. Now, digital recording offered a system where you could play back the music from a silent background with no chance of ticks or pops. And that original digital recording could be perfectly duplicated. Digital recording works by taking samples of the music that occur so many times a second that the human ear is not supposed to be able to detect the missing information. Of course, that's actually a highly debatable topic, but that's a subject for a different video. Most of the first digital recordings were done where the audio was sampled 44,100 times per second. Each of those samples used a certain number of bits to represent the sample and in the early days, this was 16 bits. So the 44,100 number is the sample rate and the 16 is the bit depth. Now, that final number that you're gonna see, which is the bit rate, is the sample rate multiplied by the bit depth, which in this case would yield 705,600 bits per second for one channel, which then you multiply that by two for the bit rate consumed by a stereo CD quality recording, which is typically expressed as 1,411 kilobits per second. Most current studios have actually upped their game and now record using sample rates of 96,000 times per second and a bit depth of 24, which can capture so much more of the subtle nuances of the music. Some even go as high as 192,000 times per second and use 32 bits to represent each sample. And we do have to say, recordings done this way can even fool an analog purist, as it captures just so much more of the music than the old standard. Now remember, at this point, we're talking about the original digital master file, which, unless you work in a recording studio, is not usually how the music arrives to your system. But that's how it gets started out. If you bought a physical CD, you would get a copy of the 16-bit depth, 44,100 times per second sample rate. But the key word here is file, and all files have a size. Large files take up a lot of space and eat into a whole lot of bandwidth when you stream them over the internet. Now, it's actually pretty fascinating to look at how much space that they each take up. So let's take a look. For example, a one hour, two channel recording done at a sample rate of 44,100 and a bit depth of 16 takes up about 620 megabits. Now that's a lot of space, but it isn't a challenge for a physical CD disc. And that same hour of music captured at a sample rate of 96,000 with a bit depth of 24 takes up about 2,025 megabits of space. Now just doing the math, you could argue that that's actually three times as much music captured in the 2496 kilohertz recording. Now, our ears may not detect it as three times as better, but most people will not debate the fact that higher resolution recordings just have a much more natural sound to them. And by the way, while we're on this topic, that is what high res audio means. It's anything recorded or mixed from analog tapes at a higher sample rate and or bit depth than the original CD standard of a sample rate of 44,100 times per second with a bit depth of 16. High res audio music files will use a sample 
sampling frequency, usually a 48 kilohertz, 96 kilohertz, or 192 kilohertz at 24 bit. You may also see 88.2 kilohertz or 176.4 kilohertz files, but they're mostly 24 bit and 96 kilohertz. Now, for almost 20 years, CDs were the format of choice to playback music, and everyone was at least starting out with a pretty good close representation of what was recorded in the studio. As a side note, don't forget that you do have to translate that digital file back into analog, which is the job of the DAC or digital to analog converter. We have a full article and video where you can learn more about DACs and how they impact your sound, and I'll leave that in a link in the description down below. Okay, moving on. After CDs were really popular, next came the iPod, the Apple Music Store and internet-based streaming music services. Now, these wanted to offer convenience over quality as what could be better than hundreds of songs in the palm of your hand or unlimited music coming right from the internet. But something had to give here. Back then, there were no tiny two terabyte SSD drives and internet speed was super slow by today's standards. So to solve the storage and bandwidth issue, they came up with the idea of compressing the file size. Now, remember, back to that big bitrate number of 1,411,000 bits per second for a standard CD, well, they dramatically compress this file down. This is because if you went to, say, a bitrate of 128,000 compared to 1,411 kilohertz, the size of the one hour music file dropped from 620 megabits down to 56 megabits. That is a huge reduction in the size of music files from the original copy. However, it allowed for portability of larger music libraries and music could come from the internet without dropping out due to bandwidth limitations. Streaming music services typically use a bitrate of anywhere from 128,000 to 328,000, which usually you see represented as 128 kilobits per second, which means 128,000 bits per second. And as bandwidth dramatically improved, unfortunately, most streaming services really made no changes. So what is missing when you compress the music so much? You're still going to hear the instruments and singers hit the same notes, but the little things that make music sound more live will just be gone. The tiny expressions in a singer's voice you hear as small volume changes will be missing. The light and airy brush strokes on cymbals will just sound more like a splash. Compression leaves in all the big nuggets of sound, but leaves out the sounds that really draw you into the performance. And this is the important part if you want to hear as much of the original recording as possible. Now, the way that you can use this new knowledge is when you're looking at streaming services. They will all state their bitrate, and you now know that this number should be compared to the CD standard of 1,411 kilobits per second to see how much you're actually missing. Now, if you do want to hear your music as close as possible to the high resolution recordings now being done in most studios, there is some really great news. The convenience of millions of songs in your hand, along with high quality audio, merged when higher speed internet services became standard in most places. Anything above 25 megabits per second is plenty for high res audio streaming. Now, some of the more popular services that offer better than CD quality are Cobas, Tidal, and Deezer. Apple Music and Amazon also offer some options if you're in one of those camps as well. And one great feature most of these streaming services have is the ability to compress the stream if you want to if you're traveling or if you want to download some music on your phone for a really long trip. This really gives you the best of both worlds as you can have the very best quality at home when you're on Wi-Fi and then sacrifice a little for the convenience of music on the go. Now our favorite of the group is actually Cobas, as they've taken things to the next level with bit rates as high as 9,216 kilobits per second for 24 bit 192 kilohertz music files. They also offer support for DSD and DXD. Most high res audio streaming services actually cost less per month than a single CD did in the 80s. So it's an incredible deal to have instant access to millions of songs, with many of them at better than CD quality. Some will also allow you to purchase and download an entire album in high res, which gives you full ownership and benefits the artist. So to fully enjoy the best digital music experience, you're then going to need to have equipment capable of handling the higher bit rates. Now, this is where those numbers that we went over earlier come in when you're looking at the capabilities of the music streaming playback systems. And as we said earlier, the ultimate sound that reaches your ears is really impacted quite a lot by the quality of the unit and the DAC that converts your digital music into analog. Okay, so to wrap everything up here and give you
give you some advice that you can actually use. If you're still using a service like Pandora, XM Radio, Spotify, or others that you signed on to in the early stages of streaming music, and you're listening through a pretty decent audio system, we highly recommend that you try the world of better than CD quality music streaming. You think that you're gonna enjoy the sound quality from your music far more than you've actually realized. You can use the knowledge we've shared to compare streaming services, and as always, our passionate team of experts at audioadvice.com or in any of our world-class showrooms are here to help you along your audio journey if you have any more questions about streaming services, bit rates, or anything that we discussed in this video today. Now, if this video has helped you in any way, I hope that you'll consider giving it a like, hitting the subscribe button, and turning on the notifications so you don't miss out on any of our latest content. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.